my hair. Nah, I look like a frat bro. <laughs> It seems kind of contradictory, but limitation is an author's biggest friend. Uh, it inspires creativity, like the setting and story relationship. As Robert McKee in his book, Story, states, limitation is vital. The first step toward a well-told story is to create a small, knowable world. Artists by nature crave freedom, so the principle that the structure slash setting relationship restricts creative choices may stir the rebel in you. With a closer look, however, you'll see that this relationship couldn't be more positive. The constraint that setting imposes on story design doesn't inhibit creativity, it inspires it. Avatar Last Airbender is a perfect example of how they use limitations and constraints in order to create a, uh, imagine, like a really imaginative world. So we're going to look in how the constraints of the power system and the world building or geography mesh together to build a constraints. The Earth Kingdom is the nation we see the most in Avatar The Last Airbender, which makes sense considering that it is right dead center of the map and is the largest of the four nations. Now, the fact that it is so large in itself is a, a constraint, and the larger the landmass, the harder it is to govern. The Earth Kingdom is actually more of a conglomerate of independent city-states rather than an actual, like, kingdom. Hence why you have a King of Omashu and also a Earth King which you really wouldn't see in that type of structure. The further disconnect between the city-states and Ma Sing Se, like the capital, uh, is further seen in Avatar Day, where they have no centralized court system at all. Instead of a right by jury and using actual evidence, they literally just host a game show. The reason why these city-states are so independent of each other is because of the Earth Kingdom's geography. A constraint. Between the northern and the southern halves, there are several bodies of water, and then after that, you get across the desert, and then you have a heat mountain range separating Omashu from Ba Sing Se. So it would make sense that the Earth King isn't really, well, that I doubt the Earth King even knows about Omashu from what we've seen from the show, but it makes sense that there's they aren't going there to tell Boomy that no, you cannot be king because they literally have to swim across the Strait of Magellan, they have to cross Death Valley, and then they have to go over the Rocky Mountains in order to tell King Boomy you can't be king that like they're not gonna be able to do that with the technology they have we see this lack of centralized power going towards local militia like in Zuko alone where the soldiers and local militia of that town are really like the ones in charge and not Ba Sing Se and apart from a couple of villages and Omashu and Ba Sing Se a lot of the Earth Kingdom villages we see are actually on the poorer side so why why stay together in the Earth Kingdom why not just secede well, we see the 100 years war come into place here, where the only thing that is keeping them together is, is security. Is security from the Fire Nation that Ba Sing Se promises that they will send troops and help you if you get captured by the Fire Nation. Whew, finally made it to Ba Sing Se. Hello, my name is Judy. Welcome to Ba Sing Se. Yeah, thank you. You know, I was just, I'm trying to start fresh, you know, after the uh, Fire Nation burned down my cafe back in my old village. I'm just trying to open up one here. Fire Nation? Yeah, you know, like, the Fire Nation, the one that's been kind of waging war for the past, I don't know, like, a hundred years? War? Come on, you know, like, the war? Like, the only war? <laughs> there is no war. What? What are you... There is no war within the walls. Are, are you trying to Jedi mind trick me? Send in the Daily. We got one. No, of course not. How silly. Well, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a go now. I'm gonna go now. Wait, have you heard of a place called Lake Lao Gai? They have a fantastic spa there. You know, actually, yeah, my shoulder's been kind of tight recently. You know, I've been stressed out and- Whoosh! I think Ba Sing Se is the epoch of working within constraints in the Avatar world. Of course, it has large walls, a pattern that we see in other kingdoms uh, in the Earth Kingdom. Because they have the abundance of earth benders, building housing and protection is really cheap. So it would make sense that they could win a war of attrition. And so it makes sense that Ba Sing Se is hard to siege because every single time a titan kicks down a wall they can just rebuild hold on shit wrong script the walls themselves are a constraint so all farming has to be done within the walls and we see uh with pictures next to the bossing say that is a desert out there it is very arid so how do we have all this lush farmland on the inside of the walls well that is answered by a large underground aquifer of old bossing say the metro or rail system is also a great use of the power system another constraint i'm going to keep saying it 
uh, and we see that also in Omashu with the delivery system. Earthbending is also applied to suppression when it comes to the daily and using those gloves as protection and also as handcuffs. We got our outfits. What do you need to go to school for? Every minute I'm in that classroom, I'm learning new things about the Fire Nation. I already have a picture of Fire Lord Ozai. And here's one that I made out of noodles. Impressive. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Binging with Brandon. Well, today, we're going to be talking about how to make the Fire Nation using a cup of buttered coffee. So first, we're going to get a mug, and then give me a second to go get the ingredients. First, we're going to get our unsalted butter, or as I like to call it, Egypt and India. I'm just going to give me a couple of seconds here to open up the butter. I got some butter fingers, so it's going to take me a little bit. As I said before, we're just going to go ahead and take a scoop and just add a little tiny scoop of Egypt. And then another scoop of India. Next, we're going to get our little Iceland, and we're going to pour some in. Not too much. Up oh, there we go. Next, we're going to be pouring in some Hawaii in there. Again, not too much. Just a little dash. And then the main ingredient, Japan. We're going to pour some nice, real imperialism in there until it gets not all the way full. I don't want it all the way full. Else the next step, you're going to spill it all over the place. Then you're just going to go ahead and froth that. Oh, hold on. Okay. You're going to stir that in so that the... Egypt and India melt nice and fine into the coffee until you get a nice, solid, chocolate brown. It also helps if your coffee is hot. Apparently mine isn't very. Then you're going to take your trusty frother and just give that whole thing a nice swirl until you can see a foam going. You want to keep going up and down. Up oh, there I go. I spilled some over the edge because I filled it too much. Keep going up and down until you get a nice little froth going and then you just pull it out. There you go. You have your Fire Nation Imperialism Affair, and it tastes actually like regular coffee. Like, I, I thought I expected worse. Firebending was a huge reason why the Fire Nation was the first to industrialize. It makes sense. Also, given their geography it is based off of Iceland, and Iceland's actual number one output is aluminum, so they would have a lot of steel. And to forge and to power those, like, uh, power their ships, the power their uh, and air balloons, they don't even really need coal. We see them use coal be to probably decrease manpower, but they don't really need it. They can power it via firebending. Now, the Fire Nation is an island nation, so they have very limited resources. So it would make sense that they would colonize Western Earth Kingdom, where we see that they have a lot of resources and other um, colonized Earth Kingdom villages lay along that Western colony, which in Korra becomes Republic City, but we're not gonna get into Korra here. The Fire Nation is also Imperial and in a time of war, a constraint. Instead of using secret police like the Dai Li to suppress information from its people, it is instead using propaganda in order to justify their cause. We see this when Aang goes to school in the Fire Nation and they're taught a skewed history from the Fire Nation perspective and not from the other perspectives. We also see that they stand up and they do a, a kind of Pledge of Allegiance type of thing. And we also see that they are not allowed to really express themselves. Also, remember that really silly recap episode where they go and watch like those people portraying the Avatar story? That is actually Fire Nation propaganda. That isn't like some lazy write-off of an episode. Well, it can be argued that it is, but it still contributes to the story because we actually see Fire Nation propaganda right before our eyes. We see what they are telling their people. Also, I'd like to say, uh, if Avatar isn't an anime, then why is there a beach episode? Regardless, talking about that episode, we see that no one of like the royal family or friends knows how to actually function in everyday life. All their life is violence and war, so they don't have absolutely zero idea when it comes to playing beach volleyball or socializing at a party. Hey, I got my eye on you. Water tribe. The Northern Water Tribe does this too. We see that most of their benders are, of course, water benders. So it would make sense that they would use canals and boats to maneuver around the city as well as build things out of ice. This also plays into their diets where most of the food that we see from the Lara tribe consists of seafood. Once again, we see the war affect this. Because of the southern raids against the southern water tribe, we see that there's no giant city, all of the villages are pretty poor, there's no infrastructure because there's no water benders because they've all been killed or captured by the Fire Nation. Without water benders, they can't construct as efficiently and effectively as they would like in the northern tribe. Unlike the other nations, air nomads are airbenders because of their high spirituality. Because of their beliefs, they are very seclusive and built their temples in places where it was really hard 
to get there if you were an airbender. This meant that they built their temples on top of mountains and within caves, where it would be very hard to access. Also because of their beliefs, they're not very materialistic people, hence why their economy is not so good compared to the other nations like the Earth Kingdom or the Fire Nation. Geography and belief system are the two biggest constraints that we see here. And once again, we see the war affect the air nomads by, you know, them being all kind of dead. It really boggles my mind the fact that it kind of flew past my head as a kid that like we literally had a show for kids that had genocide in it. Like that is, that's, that's, <laughs> that's heavy. Constraints are what inspire creativity, and Avatar The Last Airbender is a perfect example of that. There are many ways to start a story, and I think one of the best ways to start a story is by creating a world that your characters will inhabit first, and then you build the characters, and then you build the story. History, geography, and power system are the three biggest constraints, and we see that through the writing and the character interactions, and just the way that the characters interact with their world. I hope you guys found this video uh, entertaining or informative. Uh, join me next time as we're going to be diving into the individual characters, so that should be a lot of fun. Okay, that's all I got. Peace out.